Hey everybody, I'm going to take you through Lightspeed's Item Imports tool. So first of all, go to your inventory menu and click on Import Items. So the first time you go here, you're going to see this prompt and it's going to give you a downloadable CSV template. Go ahead and click on Download a Template CSV and open it in Excel or Numbers if you're on Mac. Okay, so I've already got this opened up in numbers. Let's go through column by column. The first column is description. This will be the name of your product and how it displays within search results. This is also what's going to publish to Ecom or if you're using a third party to transfer to Shopify, this will transfer as your product title. So you'll want to make sure that this is kept unique so you can tell it apart from other products. So for this example, I'm using sunglasses. I'm going to call this purple flare sunglasses. The next column is system ID. When you're first importing an item, you're going to leave this blank. System ID is going to be created automatically when the item is imported. So the next column is UPC. That's the little barcode on your product. It's called a universal product code. The next column, EAN, is the European equivalent. A tip I'll give you for adding the UPC code is that by default, usually numbers in Excel are going to format these columns to numbers. They're usually going to drop the zeros at the beginning or the end of a full number. That's a problem because a lot of UPC codes start with at least one zero. So before you enter any UPC or EAN numbers, here's my recommendation. Click on the column and go to your formatting section of whatever your program you're using and change the format to text. You can also use number. Make sure you set your decimals to zero. And even then, I have had problems doing this. I definitely recommend you just use text. This will allow you to enter the number and not drop the first zero. The same thing can be done for an EAN, although it's very rare that a product has both. The next column is custom SKU. If you're entering this as a brand new product, you're probably not going to use this column. What this could be useful for is if you're exporting all your data from an existing inventory system, you can use this custom SKU section in order to help line things up within Lightspeed. The next column is manufacturer SKU. This could also be called the model number. This is going to be what the manufacturer calls the product and it might be different from the description. The next column is vendor. This is the company that you're ordering from. We'll call this Sunglasses Limited. The next column is Vendor ID. The company that you're ordering from might have a different SKU in their system for this item. If that's the case, you can enter their SKU number into this column and it'll help in the ordering process when you're creating purchase orders. The next column is Brand. This is the manufacturer of the product. We'll go ahead and call this Bay Red and hope we don't get sued. The next column is Default Cost. That's self-explanatory. We'll say we're buying this for $65. The next column is default price. That's the default selling price to the customer. So let's call that $125. That's great margins. The next column is MSRP. That's manufacturer suggested retail price. So let's say that the manufacturer says that these are worth $250. The next column is online price. You'll only see this if you're set up with Lightspeed Ecom, but this could be a different price that you push to your website if you choose to have different pricing uh, for in-store versus online. The next few columns are all about matrix. This is for products that might have different attributes such as size and color. We're just making a single item here, so I'm going to actually skip this section. So I'll actually make a whole different video on that, and I'll link that in the description. Scrolling along, the next one is called Discountable. That's whether or not this product is discountable at point of sale. If you don't want your employees to be able to discount it, you can say no. If you want it to be discountable, type yes. The next column is called Taxable. This is whether or not the product is going to trigger tax on the sales receipt. Most commonly, you're going to want to have this as yes. The next column is called Tax Class. So these are the tax classes by default in Lightspeed. So you're going to use one of these. In this case, it's a product. So let's use item as our tax class. The next column is called item type. And this is obviously what type of item it is. In Lightspeed, the different types are single, box, assembly, or non-inventory. If you just use default, this is going to enter it as whatever your default item type is. Usually that's going to be a single item. If you want to learn more about item types, send me a message and I'll definitely help you out. The next column is called Publish to Ecom. This is so your product will push to your online store if you're set up with Lightspeed Ecom or with a third party affiliate site pushing to something like Shopify or WordPress. So if we want this to appear online, we're gonna type yes. If you didn't, you would just type no. So the next column is serialized. This is whether or not you keep track of these products with serial numbers. You can either type in yes or no, 
or you can use true or false. The next column and following columns are the categories and subcategories. So in this case, our main category type is going to be called sunglasses. Our subcategory might be men's sunglasses. And if we wanted to go even one subcategory further, we could call it colored lenses. And you can keep going and going. And in fact, you can create up to nine subcategories. So including the main category, you can have up to 10 category headings. The next column is called clear existing tags. If you have any tags on this product and you're running an update, you can put this in as yes, and it will clear all the existing tags and allow you to use the next column to add new tags. If you're importing for the first time, just leave this blank or type no. Scrolling along, we'll check out the next category and that's tags. This is where you might wanna add tags to your product. So here you might wanna add some tags. So you could do something like men's, black, and so on and so forth. And these tags will help your sales reps be able to search out the items in Lightspeed. They'll also push to your online store if your online store is set up to handle tags. The next column is called note. This is if you wanted to add a note to the item. And the next column is whether or not you want that note to display on things like sales receipts and purchase orders. So for example, if your product had any sort of warnings on it, you could put a warning thing here and have it tagged so that anytime somebody buys it, it'll print out right on the receipt. So for this example, let's go non-returnable. And yes, we want that to display on the sales receipts when somebody sells it. Archive is whether or not you wanna put this product into archive mode. Usually you're gonna put no. If you were doing an update on products that were already in the system and you wanted to turn them off, you would type in yes and this would set them into archive mode so they don't display. Let's scroll along here. So the next column is featured image. This is gonna be the very first image to display on your product pages. And each image column afterwards will display in sequence and you can have up to 11 extra images. So including the featured image, you can have 12 images in total. So I've already got an image ready for this product and I've called it purple glasses. And I've also put the .jpg, if it was a PNG or a GIF or something, you'd wanna put that in here as well. So for these next few columns, you might see something slightly different. You're usually gonna see your shop's name and then the type of column. And if you have multiple shops set up within your account, you'll notice that you'll see duplicates here for quantity on hand, unit cost, et cetera, et cetera, with your different store names here. So in this case, I have a store called Brooklyn Apparels Limited and another one called Manhattan Apparels Limited. So for quantity on hand, we're gonna put one because we only have one of these here and in the Manhattan store, there's only one as well. For unit cost, this could be if your store pays a different cost, but if you're just using your default cost that we've already entered, We'll just leave these blank. Scrolling along, the next columns are reorder points and reorder levels. This is a really cool feature that can automatically reorder products from your vendor. The shop reorder point is when you view your item or the reorder list report, the item will show as needing to be reordered if your stock is at or below the quantity specified as the reorder point. The shop reorder level specifies the stock level your store wants to replenish up to when you reorder stock. So for this example, in my Brooklyn store, I want to reorder at one, and then in my reorder level, I want it to go up to two. In my Manhattan store, I want my reorder point to be two, and I want my reorder level to be five. So what this is saying is that in the Brooklyn store, when I get to one left, I'm going to order to get to two. And in the Manhattan store, when I get to two, it's gonna reorder to five. So you remember that I put these in as one each. If I open up a purchase order, as soon as I've imported this, it'll order one for the Brooklyn store and four for the Manhattan store. So let's go ahead and scroll back to the beginning. Let's take out these rows here and we'll go ahead and export as a CSV. Click next, demo, import. I've always found it best to use a CSV when importing. It might not accept certain file types or your Excel program might have messed up certain columns. It's just easier to export a CSV. That way you're working with basic, basic data. So let's go ahead and close this. So now back in my inventory menu, I'm in my item imports and I'm gonna click new import 
and I'm going to import the demo import file. We're going to only create new items. Hit continue. So if your import file has any issues, it's going to tell you how many items have errors that need fixing. This will also allow you to download your file. So it says the UPC value is not supported. UPC must contain 7 to 8 or 11 to 18 digits. So that's funny, it caught the fact that I was just making up a number. So let's just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then you can delete these columns and re-export and then re-import. So now that I've fixed my file, I can go back to Browse, grab the fixed CSV file, and then hit Continue. It's going to validate the file and it's going to give you this little preview. It's going to say we're adding one new item. We've got one new vendor imported, one new manufacturer, three new categories, one new item with inventory and a total quantity of two. And between the two stores, it's going to add a total of $130 cost. So it's going to give you this item preview here. So it shows the description. It shows you all the different fields that we just put in this file. You can scroll through and make sure that they're A-OK. -okay. And when you're happy with it, hit import items. So once you've imported the file, it's going to tell you right here that you have one image expected. Remember that featured image we put in? Click here, and it's going to show you what the name should be. You're going to hit add images, browse, and I'll grab the purple sunglasses. Find it, open it, and hit done, and that's going to upload it to Lightspeed. So now we can look at the product in our store, and we can see all the different fields that we filled in here. So that's how Lightspeed's import items tool work. I really hope this video helped you. Give me a thumbs up if it did. Thanks for checking this out.